<laughs> can anyone write? Oh, now, there's a question. Can anyone write? Can anyone write effectively? I shall just add an effectively on the, the end of that. And my answer to that is if they can talk effectively, if they can go into a business meeting and articulate themselves clearly, then they can write. Uh, writing is just really speaking down your arm and out your fingers, isn't it? Uh, uh, it doesn't matter whether the words are exactly right or this and that. If you, if you just hammer away and, and, and you write, you can always go back and look at it and, and sort it out. And it's not like when you speak. When you speak, you speak and that's it. It's <laughs> like us sitting here. Um, there is no editing. You just got to, you know, you live with whatever you've done. Whereas with writing, you, you've got that second chance of going back and, and, and sorting it all out. So there is a bit of dis discipline, but broadly, if you can speak, you can write. You can write. That's okay. my view. That's my humble opinion. So let's think about media for a minute. Do different types of media put um, different demands on business writers? Yes, because, crikey, there are so many different medias these days. Mm. If you look at tweets, 140 characters, that's not very long, is it? But it's still, it's still a medium, or, uh, or it is still media, take your pick. Uh, blogs, a bit longer. Uh, news, features, they they all they all differ in length. They all differ in um, intensity. You know, news is get in there, get it written down, get out, and just leave the reader with the essentials. A feature writer can explore a bit more deeply, and th then you got you you got on. Well, I've already said it really, but you've got online and offline. If 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 it's online, it's generally shorter and you need to be a bit more concise, otherwise people won't read to the end. And God, some uh, online titles have like five pages for one article and they throw ads at you as you turn each page. Nobody turns the page. I doubt if they finish reading the first page, to be honest. I shouldn't really say that because I write for one of those. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> um, so uh, paper is different. Paper. You, you have the advantage that the, the, the pages are spread out in front of the reader, they see the headline, they see pictures, they see pull quotes. This is where you put the quote in, big bold letters in the middle, um, uh, illustrations, uh, crossheads, all that kind of stuff. You, you can do a lot more. And, and the headlines, if, if it's online, then the search engine has got to find the headline. Whereas if it's on paper, you can be a bit clever. You can have a silly headline and, and get away with it because it amuses the reader. And so, the, yeah, you ask if different media have placed different demands. Yes, they do. And well, Something's just occurred to me. Uh -huh. Language and vocabulary. Like, what's your view on the type of, of vocab you should be using for business writing? I think it depends on the destination. If I were writing for The Guardian, which I've done many times, uh, I, I, I write in a particular way. It's reasonably friendly, reasonably amiable. I don't aim for snooty words or anything. I'll just try and speak the way people so speak. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm writing for the Financial Times, which I've done, it's kind of different. It's a bit more po-faced. It's a bit more, well, business-like, really. So if it's a business paper, well, you did ask about business writing, mm -hmm. didn't you? Did. So I think if you, you, you just got to think about the reader. If you think about the reader and you communicate in the way that you believe that reader will accept your words. Look, mm -hmm. I used to write for the Director magazine. Um, I was their IT correspondent for years. And when, when the editor first met me, he said, who do you think our readers are? I said, captains of industry. He said, you're wrong. I said, what? He said, they're not captains of industry. They're just the people you see at the annual uh, directors, the IOD event in uh, Albert Hall or wherever it is. Uh, no, our readers are uh, one-man bands, usually call themselves management consultants, estate agents, and Midlands manufacturers of refrigeration equipment, 200 employees. Now, if you keep those three people in mind when you're writing, you'll be spot on. And you know, that's how it worked. Yeah, that helps. That does. Good.